Yeah. In three, two, one, whatever. <laughs> Welcome to Movie Life Crisis. Join us as we watch the best movies from 30 years ago. Michael J. Fox is a bellhop. Concierge. Who makes everyone's dreams come true. You guys planning on seeing any shows while you're in town? But in the world's most exciting city, he's about to discover yes. a dream of his own. Baby! You meet Friday night. I've got a boyfriend. Michael J. Fox. Under a short skirt on a breezy day, a real crowd pleaser. And Gabrielle Anwar. You're some piece of work. For love or money. Fasten your seatbelt. Rated PG. Starts Friday, October 1st at theaters everywhere. It, I really thought that the music in that trailer was uh, going to be in vogue. No, you're never going to get it. Not Dude, this time. But they picked the Ray Charles song that they played in the beginning. I like that. I know, but it it's had a that Ray classic. Ray Charles song I don't like, but <laughs> That classic, like, <laughs> 90s, like, synth yeah. uh, stab. Um, dude, uh, as soon as he says bellhop, he's like, concierge. All I think of is uh, the movie about weed with Dave Chappelle. He's like, dude, you're a janitor. I'm a custodian, dick. Like, he just gets so angry. Half-baked. Uh, have baked, dude. Uh, uh, they were supposed to name the movie Custo- uh, Concierge, but they people they were worried people didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering while I was watching this, I was like, if you are a concierge, if that's your job now, is this like your field of dreams? Like this is the <laughs> this is the movie like you guys all talk about and reference all the time. I don't think uh, you can because Jeff and I discovered when we were getting ready for this podcast that there is no legal way to view this movie in America. You can't rent it. You can't purchase it. It's not streaming anywhere. I, I, I'm flabbergasted. Yes. Luckily, I still had a copy of the DVD, which I ripped to my computer and so I could watch it at work. Uh, and I shared it with you. I, I, like, I'm, I'm not opposed to purchasing movies. If I can't find them anywhere streaming, I just buy them on Amazon or whatever or YouTube. Right. I don't care. Like yeah. three, $3. dollars It's fine. But you, this one you can't even buy. You can't. I, I wish you had buy we a known hard that. copy of it. But yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. I could have, I could have purchased a DVD of it, and then purchased a DVD player, and then purchased yeah. a TV to hook that DVD player up to. Yeah, I, I uh, if we'd known that, we probably would have picked Life with Mikey instead of this one, just right. so that anyone who wants to watch along with us is able to. Um, right. I did find it on YouTube someone has the whole movie, but it's it's like almost picture in picture, like only like a third of the YouTube <laughs> frame actually is. Right. But you can watch the whole movie there. That's so they don't to. get busted. That's yeah, so they, that's trying so to get around the uh, get thing. around the copyright stuff, right? Right, but you know what you can do is you just zoom in on that part of the screen. Yeah, dude, just zoom and in. Then you have all four pixels. I just can't believe we did Fear of a Black Hat for Sean on Patreon, which came out in 1994. It's streaming on Peacock. That movie made like it's streaming thirteen dollars. <laughs> streaming on Peacock here on the main feed, we call that the Peacock. Peacock. <laughs> on Patreon, we call it something different. We shorten it. Oh, that movie made like shorter. seventeen dollars, and it's streaming on Peacock. And this movie. It, it made eleven million dollars, but like now I can't even hear you say it on Peacock. Like, <laughs> and the fact that I know what we shorten it to, and then also you keep talking about how short it is, <laughs> makes me want to make another joke that I shouldn't. This is the kind of nonsense that we get up to over on Patreon, where uh, we are not PG or PG thirteen. Yes. Right, right, right. Speaking of movie life crisis, season three, episode eighteen, Michael J. 18. Fox for love or money. How did we get here? How do we get here? It goes so fast. They yes. grow up so fast. Uh, also released as the concierge. Uh, yes. I don't know where, because I don't think this movie got released all that wide. That but, sounds uh, like a French word that they would release in France. I'm pretty sure it is a French word. Uh, don't fact check that, because I don't know for sure. But um, <laughs> The etymology of concierge? Don't do it. I mean, we don't have... Because this movie's not streaming anywhere, it basically does not exist anymore. There's not a ton of information right. on it. I found one 15-minute video clip of Michael J. Fox being interviewed by some, like, local TV person in Dallas, Texas, when this movie released on the press tour. Yeah. That's literally all I could find out about this movie. That's all uh, And that and whatever is on the Wikipedia page, which is basically just the plot of the movie. Yeah, that's different. Um, speaking of Patreon, we just released Field of Dreams. Uh, Harry, nice. When Harry Met Sally will be coming out probably next week. That's awesome. We're doing bonus movies there going back backwards on the Patreon feeds. We're in 1989 right now. Um, anyone who wants to hear more stuff or just wants to support what Jeff and I are doing, five bucks a month over there is the lowest tier that gets you access to everything. Thanks again to all of our supporters on Patreon. And also thank you to everyone listening here to the main feed. Uh, yeah. Because tell your friends. This is still our primary uh, yeah. situation. And, and it's super fun. Thanks everybody for listening here on the main feed. We got, I don't know, like eight eight movies left maybe for 1993. Some really, really? fun ones. That's it? 
I think uh, maybe more. One, maybe two, we get three, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you count a bonus Halloween, episode. yeah. If we do a bonus Halloween movie, yeah, yeah. Dang, so, still got some fun stuff coming uh, next time, week. Time funs when you're having flies. Yes, that's crazy. All right, so why did we do this movie that uh, made eleven million dollars and was not even in the top one hundred for the year? Jeff, take it away. Um, because I freaking liked it. Dude, I, me too, man. I remember... It's, it's Michael J. Fox, It's dude. Michael J. Fox. There's, are there people that don't like him? Uh, I don't know. There's definitely not. I don't understand why I remembered it so well. I remembered all of it. I did, too. I, there's quotes in here that I didn't realize this is where I got them from. <laughs> right. Like, I was like, oh, wait, that's who said that. <laughs> all of my memories have slowly been mixed up with dreams and movies. Yeah. That's where they happen. So, dude, yeah, I've remembered a lot of it, and it's really, uh, it's Michael J. Fox, dude. I know. I, I we just, talked I, about the, this. This and know. Life with Mikey both came out in 1993. <clears throat> both of them didn't do a lot of business. They're not the top Michael J. Fox movies, but we're like, we're gonna definitely gonna do one of them. We like both of them. Right. I think we just kind of flipped a coin, picked this one over Life with yeah. Mikey, which I still like and would happily yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I could not believe Can that how be much the this Halloween memory. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Life with Mikey. God, I uh, love that song. Me too. Me too. What, were you, what were you playing? That's a great movie. And I didn't realize until I started looking at it, like the Michael J. Fox got the Parkinson's diagnosis in 91. And they said, like, mm-hmm. you probably only have about 10 years left where you can work. And so he just started booking a bunch of stuff. He's like, I don't Everything. know how many movies I can make. So it's like, just give me that. Yes, I'll play. I'll do that. I'm, I'll have it. So that's why these movies are coming out, like in the same year. He's doing a bunch of them. None that's of them great. are all that great. He's just like, let me just get some work, like make some money, get some stuff out there. Not all that great. I loved it. I did too. But like, even in 1993, it made no money. Right. Um, right, right. $30 million budget made $11 million. That is a big is swing and a miss. So like, let me ask you this. Is it because this is like not prime Michael J. Fox time? He's, this is the tail end of it. Yeah. Cause it's I don't know. Mid-80s, I mean, he's right. Well, back to the future was in, uh, 85, 85 I think. Right. And then, uh, part two and part three were like 89 and 90. So part yeah. three comes out in 90 and then 91, he does doc Hollywood. And then uh, like doc Hollywood is kind of the, I think the end of like Michael J. Fox is like a big movie star. Right. But I'm saying like family ties. That's like, yeah, family early ties eighties to the early eighties, eighties, and then right. Back to the Future mid eighties, and so yeah, that's why I, was, I actually have this on my notes later on. It's like by the time we get to Doc Hollywood in ninety one, which we did on one of our first episodes in season right. one, like that's kind of at the tail end of Michael J. Fox's movie career. He does like some sporadic stuff, but um, like nothing. Like it's kind of crazy how short his filmography is, given how big of a right. figure he still is. Right, right, and obviously it's because of his it's because of Parkinson's. He's thirty two. Or he's 30 when he gets diagnosed. So you've got to think that he would have been like Harrison Ford. He would have made movies for another 40 or 50 years. Right. And I probably would have seen them all. Right. I would have seen them all. Yeah. 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 I want to talk about Michael J. Fox. So we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Give us a synopsis. All right. Uh, Doug is a young man that works all day as a, a concierge at a luxurious hotel, saving money to make his own business. Unfortunately, when he finds the financial supporter that he needs, uh, he discovers that his, quote, savior is having an affair uh, with the woman he loves. Now he's got to choose between money or love. Nice. See how, did, see how, did, see how, see how I switched it on purpose? Yeah, yeah, you you flip-flopped it. Did you even attempt to have AI synopsize uh, this? Yeah, I did. It didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, it AI kept giving like, nah, me, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it kept giving me another movie uh, that wasn't a 90. I kept telling it was 93, but it gave me uh, For the Love of Money, uh, and there's two different versions of that. So like right. I just did, I just gave up. You just, gave <laughs> just did it manually. <laughs> yeah. Just, just said, forget it. Forget yeah. all that. Well done. I like that synopsis. Uh, $30 million budget, $11 million gross. This is 103 on the year. So outside the top 100, it's right in that range with like RoboCop three and what's eating Gilbert <laughs> grape. <laughs> like, uh, RoboCop 3 is the stuff that they don't show <laughs> on the free preview weekend of HBO when you get that free weekend. Or like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Right. Where it's like yeah. if everyone wishes they could delete that one. Man, right. that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 is so, so, so bad. I I thought that was like a drama production, like a like a small college theater yeah, adaptation. Yeah, that's because of- they changed up too much stuff from the la- from the first two. I think they wrote it in about four days on the back of a paper bag and they just, <laughs> they rented the costumes and they just went Dude, out and did I, it. But this is the thing. I don't I know this is in one oh three, number one oh three, and I know it didn't make any money, but I don't see it as that kind of movie. I don't either. I had I don't I like I don't 
I wish I could talk to someone like uh, Brian Grazier, Barry Sonnenfeld, somebody, because I don't understand how this didn't do better. Because it's good, right? Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's well funny. acted. Like I don't. Yeah, it's well acted. It's well. Brian Grazier is the producer. Like that dude has produced everything. He's got like, his right. production company with Ron Howard is like forty seven Academy Award nominations. Right. Barry Sonnenfeld is the director. Barry Sonnenfeld's the DP for When Harry Met Sally. He's directing for the Coen Brothers. He does all the right. Men in Black movies. Yeah. Like Michael J. Fox is still Michael J. Fox. Like I don't get it. I don't know right. why this didn't do more business. And I don't I, I don't know where to find that answer out, but I, I'm yeah, honestly really curious. Do you, that's what I'm saying. So it's October of ninety three when it's released. Right. Does like does like the timing like that have anything to do with it? I just I don't know what it is. I don't either. And like there's people that I talk to like today at work that have never they don't even know what this movie is. How could they? It's not on the internet. Why <laughs> I, I went and looked up. I went and looked up the other Imagine Films, which is Brian Grazier and Ron, Ron Howard's production company, that are distributed by Universal Pictures. I'm like, maybe because you know they just buy like whole batches of stuff. It's like, hey, here's all right. our shit. You want it? And they right. go, yeah, sure. Well, but I'm like, there's other pictures that Imagine did that Universal distributed that are that you can find. In yeah. fact, most of them. But like, this is just it's not out there, and I don't even know. Like, I don't know enough to know how that even happens. But like, Kindergarten Cop is Imagine and Universal. Uh, Backdraft, Problem Child Two is Imagine and Universal. Uh, All of Far those and Away, too, though. Like, yeah, like Apollo Thirteen. Like that's the Nutty Professor. Those are Imagine and Universal. Yeah. Liar, liar. Like all that stuff is out, and you can yeah. find it. And this you cannot. Yeah, it's weird because I, I just checked to see. Uh, so DVDs twenty bucks, you know, uh, right. from Amazon. You can get a VHS. For six dollars and twenty cents, if hey, you still have a right. VHS player, um, and like it's on Blu-ray. So if it's on Blu-ray, you would think right. they they've already upscaled it or whatever they have to do, and they could put it on streaming. Yeah, like I don't know, it, I don't know if it's um, does like nobody want to buy it? That's what I'm saying. Did no one ever ask like like you know to be like, hey, I'll give you forty bucks for for love or money? And they're like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Like I don't understand. I don't know how it works. I don't like oh, you and I are idiots, so we don't understand this stuff. But I am curious. Any movie that had Michael J. Fox in it, how is it not available for streaming? Like right, right now, I don't get it. All um, the, yeah, all the stuff. Um, and dude, looking through the thing, like everybody that, oh, this is a classic, fantastic love story. It's Michael J. Fox, great movie, five exclamation points. The only bad reviews are, there's two glitches that happened in the movie because there was a scratch and I had to fast forward. Yeah. Like yeah, those I mean, are the uh, bad reviews. Siskel like, and Ebert gave it like two stars, two and a half stars out of four. I don't like those guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I, that, I don't really care that much. It's you know, Rotten Tomatoes, which is not the yeah. most reliable thing either. Is thirty seven percent. But but again, there it, are movies in that range that have done a lot more business. That like right. And but also, we always talk about like what mood are you in when you watch it? Yeah. If I was in a bad mood, I might give it the same audience review that this person did—a hilariously unfunny pile of trash. <laughs> like that's <laughs> what do you want from a movie? Like this is. God, this thing like, was funny though, man. It's, I, Michael J. Fox is just funny. He's Donahue. Yeah. How'd that get in there? Like, get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so fast with it too. He's, he, he was he's good. super quick. He was good. Um, all right, uh, awards we could skip. Sequels and spinoffs yeah. we could skip. This thing disappeared yeah. entirely from the culture. There, there was a Bollywood unofficial remake, but that doesn't count. All right, that's great. We'll do that for the Bollywood spinoff when this thing really. <laughs> when this when, really he, takes when the empire off. happens, can we do a Bollywood music spinoff? Because that's what I really want. Yeah, let's hire some people and outsource that. Because I don't know anything about Bollywood. <laughs> we'll have AI do I'm, it. I'm too old to learn. <laughs> um, do you remember when and where you first saw this? Uh, no, I don't. This is one of those recorded off the TV things. I can remember what it looked like. What the it was for love or money, and the word or was both capitalized O and R, and I don't know why that was both those <laughs> letters were capitalized in the word or. Uh, but I can vividly remember what the sticker looked like on the outside of the VHS. So Yeah, I remember the poster. I remember what the VHS looked like. Um, and I think maybe I owned it at some point. I, yeah, I still have it on DVD. That's how you watched it. Yeah. Yeah, I rented it um, for sure when I was a kid when it came out. And I probably right. purchased it later on when I was like uh, acquiring in my in my movie acquiring face when I was just like, yeah. oh, I remember this movie. I'll buy it. How much is it? doesn't matter. Here's my wallet. <laughs> Oh it's God. Tuesday. Let's go to Best Buy. <laughs> you take my wallet and give me back how much you think I should have. <laughs> Just still have bookshelves full of DVDs with the with the uh, shrink wrap it's on them. At all my all house. still still. <laughs> 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 oh, me too. I, I had so many though. For reals, people would come over and just be like, "Can I rent this from you?" 
And I had to find a web, like a website that would allow me to type that in so I can remember who has what. Yeah. We, uh, the, we have a giant used bookstore in Nashville called McKay's, which is like the size of a Home Depot and you can bring them stuff and return it and they give you store credit. And so nice. I would take like trash bags of DVDs from Louisiana when I drive to my parents' house back there and go like, here, here's all these. Give me whatever you think I deserve. And they'd be like, that's yeah, 300 DVDs. Here's $90 of store credit. And I was like, Hey, Ooh, nice. Right. That's awesome. So I was Did slowly they, and converting just those. resell them as like used yeah, yeah. DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. They that's sell them awesome. for, you know, three bucks a piece or whatever. Uh, which is fine because I don't want to do that. So, dude, I was wor- when I was working in LA for CVS, a, a store right around the corner from where uh, the hotel I was in was closing down, and they were selling whole sections of it was like a blockbuster type store, but it was a mom and pop, and I bought whole sections. Just <laughs> the guy was like, "You get you get the whole thing. You want the shelf too?" And I was like, "I don't want the shelf." And I literally just went through and picked a whole bunch of stuff. And moved it to the shelf I wanted. And I said, I want all these. And he's like, all right, that's fine. And then I just knocked them into a box and brought them back to the hotel room and just watched DVDs. <laughs> this was before streaming. So like, yes. It's like supermarket sweepstakes, only the people there are very sad and chubby. <laughs> yeah. No, it's dude, exactly that. like supermarket sweepstakes then, turns out. Uh, <laughs> well, forget the blackjack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so I don't remember. We rented this when I was a kid because Michael J. Fox – no one's offended by Michael J. Fox. I could always watch these movies. And, yeah. Uh, it With was your great. parents in the He's, room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you rate it? Um, dude, I went back and forth. I know no sevens. So, uh, but I really like, dude, there's, I've brought, I liked it. So I gave it an eight. Yeah. I gave it eight, eight, eight chimmy dogs. Say eight. Um, Say eight. Yeah. Eight out of 10. I don't, I, I, I pondered an eight, honestly. But you went lower. I, I ended up six and a half out of 10, no sevens. Yeah, so right. six, six and a half to eight is, is the jump. There's, there's just one or the yeah. other. Yeah. Um, That's yeah, a big man, jump like, too. That, isn't that a big jump? It is a big jump. I know. But you know, we're, we're three years in now. This is how we're doing things. I figure if everybody listens to this goes, you know what? JT has no idea what he's talking about. I loved Captain Ron. I think I side more with what he says. Whatever movie he says is good. Uh, and this is one I want people to see. And I think people, more people, I don't know how they're going to see it now, but I want more people to see it. So I'm giving it an eight. <laughs> yeah. And I you have want, zero sway over any of this. You want more people to see it uh, yet. It is impossible for people to see it because you can't literally, <laughs> you can buy cannot. physical media. You can, you can purchase it. Yeah. Six and a half. I don't, uh, I don't have any complaints really. It's just not like it, it is ultimately a pretty forgettable movie. Uh, yeah. Like if my kid never watches this, I'm not going to feel yeah. like his film education is incomplete. He's but at the same it. time, he's going to watch it because I really like it. Him. It's good. <laughs> I'm like, going to definitely buy it for him. So he has to buy a DVD player. Great. Yeah. He'll chew on that because he's <laughs> never going to own a DVD player and he's chewing on his books. Dude, this movie's funny. Like it's got great pace. It's well directed. It's well acted. You can, there's yeah, a bunch of like character actors. There's like a half dozen character actors that you oh, recognize. Like, oh, I like that guy. He's in the whatever thing. Yeah. Clues is dad. Get yeah. out of my chair. Like that guy. <laughs> Dem things. I like that guy. Yeah. And then the guy who manages the hotel, it's got the crazy eyes. Like he's been in a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the old guy, the freaking doing the ashtrays. Like, Milton. I don't know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just. Dude, something about though, something about Michael J. Fox, man. He's like, he's snarky and like kind of cool, but he's also like vulnerable. Like you can tell, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, man. He's just. I want to be able to do like he does it, like realize that he's vulnerable because he's a little short guy and he plays that up, but also like he gets a lot of stuff. I don't know, dude, he's, he's really good. And I don't know why. I mean, I know why he's not making stuff now, but like, I don't know why people wouldn't like him. I don't either, man. I think his likability is off the charts. And I think he's, I mean, just, you know, one of the most talented actors that probably I'm ever going to see. Yeah. Just like it's super, very, very present, very believable, really funny, yeah. super quick. And like, yeah. also kind of has the ability to like, we talked about this when we did Doc Hollywood. He's so likable that he can play someone who's shitty, but you still like them because still it's like them. Yeah. Like a t- Tom Hanks can do that. You know yeah. who can't do that? Robert Redford. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people can't do that. If Bradley Cooper plays someone shitty, like he did in Wedding Crashers, he's like, ah, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. Like Bradley Cooper cannot overcome someone that shitty, but Michael J. Fox can. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, but yeah, so I got six and a half out of ten. You got eight out of ten. It's eight. It's fun. It's, it's a good movie. Yeah, that 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 puts us uh, together at around seven, and that's yeah. nice. 
That's like the right it. range. All right, let's do yeah. scenes. What's your first scene? It, well, the first scene I have written down, because uh, I just went back and did the notes uh, after I took watched the whole thing. When the mob guys come. Yeah. And they're like, uh, they have the little uh, case and it looks like it might be a gun case and he's carrying it, <laughs> drops it down onto the freaking desk and he asks where, you know, um, the guy staying, the uh, Italian guy that's super freaking hairy. Yeah. Uh, Sal- Mr. Salvatore. Uh, yeah. He's like, Dan, where, where's Jean? Uh, yeah. Where's Gene Salvatore? And he's like, I don't, who are you talking about? And he grabs the book and reads it and then he tries to beat him up. They try, he tries to go up the service elevator to beat him. And every time they flash back to them, they're riding in the elevator and the shitty music's playing. It's really great. When he's running through the corridors in the back, there's like people from the hotel sleeping on shelves and stuff. Um, then they get there and it turns out like they're just trying to play happy birthday on a violin and sing it and give him a cake. Uh, and he's like, you know about this kid? He's like, I owe you one. Uh, how they set that whole thing up for later down the road with the trash, uh, trash trucks. Um, and then Michael J. Fox plays it all cool. He's like, yeah, tonight stays on the house. Like that whole thing. I like that whole scene. I remember the scene once I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, that's what it is. But in the beginning, I really did forget what it was about. So it took me on that ride like it was supposed to. And I liked it. That's a good scene. I don't. I was trying to figure out, like, does the concierge have the power to just go, like, that hotel looked expensive, to just be like, yeah, you don't have to pay for tonight since it's your birthday. Like, I have a birthday every year, as most of us do, and no hotel is ever like, you could stay for free, it's your birthday. Right. I would get, like, a free ice cream, or if I go to, like, Buffalo Wild Wings, right. I get, like, a free appetizer. I don't get free a free... diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. I've had diarrhea already. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a free night stay at the hotel. Right. But dude, what about Michael J. Fox, the concierge? What about Doug doesn't say that he could make that work? Yeah, he could definitely make some stuff happen. No, one of the things I really liked about this movie, and I think I like all movies like this, like uh, the movie Waiting uh, with Ryan Reynolds, yeah. where they're all yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie's horrible now because all the jokes they're making are super inappropriate 20 yeah. years later. So but any bad. movie that gives you like it, the inside look at like a thing, like I've never worked in a hotel. So like seeing the, like he goes to the secret door to the bar, it's like a service corridor and he like sprints down there. And he's like, I love yeah. that stuff. Yeah, me too. And, um, I like also, I didn't know what you were going to say there. I like also that Michael J. Fox is the best at what he's doing. Yeah. And it shows how, like how he makes all that work. Uh, that's, that's my jam. I like yeah. that. So what's your first scene? Uh, my first scene is uh, is Michael J. Fox and uh, Gabrielle Anwar. She's like the perfume girl at the freaking counter, yeah. and she's also the mistress of the guy who ends up being the villain. Who's he's Michael J. Fox is trying to get to loan him money so he can build his very own hotel, right? Uh, but he goes to the perfume counter to like pick up a gift for the guy, and then she turns out she's there, and he's trying to hit on her. And he's been trying to pick her up, and she's like, "I have a boyfriend," and, yeah. but he just does the thing. She's like trying to. She's dealing with some older lady and. Yeah, that she's like, I don't like it. I don't, scene, I don't like the sense. And she's like, and they're all getting confused. And, and Gabrielle Anwar's like, maybe I sprayed on you. And she's like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. And then he, dude, he just rolls up and he just gives her the freaking con man. And he's like, you know what I think you need? He's like, you need some hair. Bring it. So I'm going to smell it. <laughs> 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 he sniffs her for like 20 seconds. And, and he's, he's like, you need to wear it. Because he's like really going into it. Yeah. He's like, you need to wear what my girlfriend wears. She's about your age. Well, she's probably not your age. She thinks she's 34. <laughs> Yeah. And this woman's like clearly like in her late fifties. Right. Uh, the dude, he sells her some perfume. He gets her out of there. And, and then Gabrielle Aaron was like shaking her. He's like, what do you want me to do? She's, she's out of your hair now. You just tell her what she wants to hear. She goes away. Right. But he's like, right. he's so, he's so fast and he's so like, you could tell he's just like, I don't care. I just say whatever to get the people to do what I want. And then I move on with my life. And then you go to the next step. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude, I love that part because uh, I don't think I realized that when people shop for perfume that they spray it on the lady who's selling the perfume's arm. <laughs> and then she was like, it's getting confused with all the other scents. And she's like, lend me an ear. So she like puts it behind your ear and she's like, it's too woodsy. Yeah. And then, of course, he overhears that. So when he comes up, he's like, uh, yeah, you might as well just glue a little pine cone back there. And she's like, woodsy, I'm not. Uh, and then, like you said, he just lays it on thick. And he's like... Uh, that heady must, a spicy experience as this boy <laughs> rooting and foraging morning, evening, night. And, um, dude, right at the end when he goes like, like she grabs the bag and he goes, you be careful now. Like, dude, <laughs> killing me. I, the whole time I was like, this is, 
This is the Michael J. Fox that I like. And it's your first uh, introduction to the female lead, Gabrielle Anwar. And they're right. kind of like, you see the back and forth right away. Like he's like, she's laughing. She knows who he is. He keeps asking around. She keeps saying no. She has a boyfriend. He's like, that boyfriend is definitely married and right. is definitely rich. She's like, I never said that. And he already knows. Yeah. 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 He calls it. That's great. Yeah. That's uh, my I, first uh, and your second. So I guess my, second? Yeah, I'll go to my second? second, my second one is uh, those same two. I really like. I mean, this whole movie is just those two, basically. Right. Um, I don't really care about the like villain, the financier storyline. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's those two. He takes her out to look at his hotel site. Like I just oh, remember yeah. it from when I was little. It's like a Me too. it looks like an old castle. He's got like one of those things where it's like it's a piece of glass, but it's got like the it's, it's the, a matte painting. It's a matte painting. Well, I guess so. But it's like you you put it in the thing in the holder, and then you look through, it and it puts the like entrance over the actual building. Yeah, it's like a way superimposes to like superimposes what it looks, what's yes. it's, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, superimposes. It was way cool. I, right dude, word. I totally remember that too. And I completely and, remembered that. And they they do that, and they and then she's uh, they're talking. about She's a singer, and she's like, oh, I just have this dream where I'm just like singing to all these people, and he's like, I can make that happen. And he literally cuts to her like singing the national anthem in empty Yankee Stadium. Yeah, just because he's got every connection in New he, York. Yeah, City. he's got he's got pull. Did yeah. you see? Uh, I don't know how closely you watched her sing that. Uh, I had to rewind it because um, she said, "Banner, uh, yet brave." <laughs> And I was like, no, nope, those are the wrong words. Let's rewind it. And Jake was like, I think those are the wrong words. He's like, isn't it wave? And I was like, yeah, but she says brave very clearly. And then it bothered the hell out of me the whole rest of the time. Yeah. To be fair, she's not American. She was born yeah, yeah. in uh, Surrey. Yeah. yeah. She, uh, but Fiona. just like Eddie Izzard, who I saw last night at the Ryman, confirm, deny, confirm, deny, <laughs> start strong, middle bits, a little iffy, and then you finish strong. And a fish in the <laughs> sky and a big monkey pie. And dude, I totally remember him moving that pallet, mm-hmm. unfolding the little cover that had the glass sitting in it. Uh, that's great. And that's he like, great. he like slips it into a piece of driftwood and then you can see it's like, oh, it's got the flags and it's got yeah. the freaking roofs and it's got and the fancy you, cars. Yeah, and it's like, this you is stand what the just like. right. It superimposes it perfect. Uh, I really that's like really that. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah, a cool I way wish, to do something. I know. I know you do all that stuff now with like 3D visual, visualizations, which are also very cool. But I right. would totally, if you're going to build a house, you go out there and they like hammer a thing into the ground. They slide a piece of glass through there and like, this is what your house will look like right there. That's where it's going to sit. All you got to do awesome. is like, yeah, you just got to make sure you're matching up certain stuff to where it puts it in the right spot. And that would be awesome. I feel like for people who are rich enough now, they probably would really prefer that over a 3D visualization. Like you drive out there, there's a piece of glass and all the stuff is like printed on it. You set that there and it's like, look right here. Here's what's going to look like. That's awesome. What's your last scene? All right. So my last scene is um, Michael J. Fox has just gone up to uh, kick uh, Fiona out of the penthouse that she's been spending time with the uh, her, her uh, boyfriend. The bad guy. Um, they both get in an elevator because he's already said, like, let me guess. He, you see a side of him that nobody else sees. And he's, like, just calling her out and getting it all right. Right, right. She's, she's getting he's super He's married, pissed. but she doesn't understand him. That they're all, The divorce right. is all final, just signing a couple, couple paper, people's pieces right. of paper. Right, and call it in the day. Uh, they get into the elevator, and there's a guy really close to the camera, like right <laughs> by the door. And he's like an older guy. He's kind of like uh, leaning over, hunchback a little glasses really close to the camera and they're standing in the back and she's fuming and he's just like trying, you know, doing the Michael J. Fox thing. He's just trying to calm down, straightening out his tie. And she she leans over and pulls the freaking alarm and stops the, stops the, uh, the fire alarm and pulls, uh, stops the whole. She starts yelling at him. She's like, you don't know anything about us. And he's like, did you enjoy your stay at the Bradbury, sir? (laughs) Have you tried the breakfast buffet? We're very proud of it. (laughs) We're very proud of that. And the whole time she's yelling at him. (laughs) Yeah. And the guys, he's not turning around to look at Michael J. Fox or her. He's just looking straight ahead going, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Uh, dude, I freaking love that. And then as soon as they get the, you know, the doors open up and the, uh, concierge understudy and, Milton are both standing there with the uh, fire extinguishers because they want to make sure it's not <laughs> not on fire. Uh, the way that old guy played it, freaking loved it. That's a great one. My last one is uh, Michael J. Fox meets with all the other concierges in Central Park and they just are exchanging tickets. It's like, yeah. I need I need Yankees. Who's got Yankees? So it's like, okay, great. And any cats on Broadway? Cats are here. You owe me 20 and then 20 is 80 minus 300 is... Dude, and the whole thing, it looked like it was like three-card Monty. Yeah, and they were just... 
through so fast. And that's and where the like, Donahue thing is. That's where the Don and Michael J. Fox is like, he's just shuffling the tickets. He literally looks like a blackjack dealer. And he's like, Donahue, how the hell did I get in here? And he throws it. <laughs> and, uh, and that cracked me up. And then also I saw in the interview that he did on the like press junket, he's like, that was an improv from him. Nice. Cause the lady that's- like asked him about the Donahue line and he was like, Oh yeah. He's right. like, I was just, he's like, I kind of came up with that. She's like, do you think you'll still be able to do this show? He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, Phil's a friend of mine. I don't think he'll care. <laughs> and he's like, I thought I about like Sally, Jesse, Raphael, but it's like it's too many words. You know, and That's Oprah like words. films in Chicago, so that one doesn't work. But Donahue's great. Everyone knows who he is. Like the tickets are free, yeah. so obviously I wouldn't need it in my pocket. And, I assume that people listening to this would know who Donahue is. I, hopefully. Phil Donahue used to have a show. The <laughs> Donahue Show. <laughs> the Donahue Show. Um, but it's one of those shows we do every day. So like you don't have to purchase tickets to it. They give those right. tickets away because they're yeah, trying they to just get 300 seats. people in there every single day. Right, right, right. But yeah, he's talking super fast. He's like ripping off the other concierges. Like you could tell all of them are, and they're all chattering. Like they're having a conversation <laughs> while it's going on. It's like, did you get yeah. your money for your hotel? Have you guys started your hotel? He's like, yeah, yeah, $3 million. It's like just a couple hundred years worth of tips. He's like, I got it. He's like, I got a guy who's got it. I, I'm but on the it. whole time he's also like, and and who needs who needs Knicks tickets? Yeah, and he's like, night yeah. games. Hold on, we'll get to your night games. It's like we're not there yet. That's freaking sweet. And the dude, I know, like, there's a lot of cutting and editing because you couldn't see his face, but it sounded really good. Like it was quick. Like it yeah. was really good. I liked it. That's the thing, man. It's just like a, it's just a patter. Like the whole thing, the whole thing, man. There's so much, honestly, for a movie that is disappeared entirely that I could still talk about. Like he takes Mr. Wegman to go buy the watch and he oh, walks man. him out of the hotel. He's like giving him a speech about New York. He's like, someone hands him a flyer. He takes it out of his hands and throws it away. Yeah. He's like, New York is the jewelry capital of the world. You have to be an idiot to pay retail. He like walks him into the shop to talk to a guy. Yeah. And then he like negotiates with the guy. The guy insults him. He gets Mr. Wegman to buy the watch for like a third of what he was going to pay at the hotel. Yeah, and then he's they leave again, and Mr. Wegman's like, "He said mail the box, and I don't have to pay sales tax." And Michael J. Fox is like, "Uh, he's like, yeah, hold on, let me let me go ask about that. I'm, let me go. Yeah, find yeah that out. can't be right. Let me make sure." He runs yeah. back in the store. He gets a freaking kickback from the guy, and he's like, "That was a great insult. I hadn't heard that one before. See you next time." <laughs> like the whole movie is just jammed full of moments like that. Like, yeah, God. and it's and it's all just Michael J. Fox knowing how to work every angle of all the things. Yeah, and that's great, and dude. That whole Mr. Wegman thing where he sees what's happening in the beginning and then just kind of lets it go and then decides to help, that's freaking genius. That's that's good shit. I yeah. like it. And that's like another it. aspect of this movie I really like is any movie where there's like fast talking or con uh, con artists, I really love. Yeah. Like yeah. Matchstick Men. What's the one with uh, oh, Will man. Smith and Margot Robbie? Like any movie like that yeah. I love. Where, with the uh, football players down on the field? Yeah. What was that called? Something good. With the Super Bowl? I don't know. I could look it up. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't matter. Keep good. going. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, what about quotes? So that's all three, right? For you. Yeah, yeah, that's three. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's your first quote? I don't have a lot of quotes. The first one I got is early on in the movie. He goes to buy something at the hotel gift shop and he's <laughs> he's buying like mints and it's like he needs like $99 and change in the woman work. 9946. 9942. And the woman work in the gift shop is like clearly this old lady who's not in a hurry and wants to like really talk to him. And right. And it's like, okay, so he's like, so it's, uh, you, it's, it gave me a hundred, it's uh, six, it's 58 cents. And so she starts typing into an old school adding machine. He goes, yeah, 99.42. She goes, 99.42. He's like, yeah, anywhere in that ballpark is fine. Don't, don't worry about that. I'm not fussy about the, yeah. and she hands him, all right, here's 19.42. And, and he goes, uh, no, 99.42. She goes, oh, do you know why I said 19.42? And he said, no. <laughs> Because you're trying to cheat me out of money. Yeah. Yeah, because you're trying to stiff me out of 80 bucks. I was married in 1942. I was a war bride. He's like, yeah, I think I read that. <laughs> in a library. <laughs> he goes, I think I read that in a library. <laughs> uh, dude, if you look at the magazines behind him, because uh, I had paused it to write that part down too. Dude, USA Dream Team is on like four or five magazines. Yeah. Seinfeld's on the cover of GQ. I saw that. Uh, Princess Dies on a whole bunch of them. It was... It's it's old school old school magazines, uh, yeah, dude. I had that uh, ninety nine forty two written down, but it didn't make my cut for. Uh, yeah, for I just had anywhere in that ballpark is fine because uh, <laughs> that I just cracked me up when he said that. And I rewound it to watch it again to watch the whole speech. And I was like, God, he's just. But he's it's the same thing. It's the Michael J. Fox thing. Like he's being a dick to this old lady, but it's hilarious, and I'm not upset about it at all. And she's and not upset she's either. Not, yeah, she's not upset either. That's what I love. <laughs> I want to be able to do that to someone's face and not 
Dude, I'm pretty sure you can do that. I think you have that ability. I do not. People get mad at me even when I'm being nice to him. Uh, and you can say whatever to anyone. And they're like, that Jeff, he's funny. I like that guy. Let's see if he wants to come over for Thanksgiving. I want, I'm going to start studying Michael J. Fox and just, I'm going to get that down perfect. You have to run your hand through your hair a lot. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Um, no. No. Uh, what's your uh, first quote? All right. First quote. Uh, apparently, this is where I got it. And I say it all the time. <laughs> Uh, I'm a sympathetic vomiter. I hear it, I see it, or I smell it. I'm going to. Um, dude, sympathetic, I think I say sympathetic puker, uh, yeah. but vo- he says vomiter. Dude, I. this is where I got that. I say that all the time. Somebody <laughs> throws up at lunch, and I'm on lunch duty, I'm like, whoa, I gotta leave. I'm a sympathetic vomiter. Like, I get the heck out of there. Because uh, I am that person also. Uh, dude, I say this literally all the time. Every time somebody's going to throw up. You never had to come clean about that. No one would have ever known. No, no, it's people still <laughs> like now nobody still knows because nobody listens to this podcast. And also you can't watch the movie. This is the right. first time in the history of our podcast that more people will listen to us talking about the movie than we'll have watched the movie. That's like, true. Because you cannot watch it. This is, yeah. we finally have pulled ahead. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the lead. Uh, but yeah, sympathetic puker. Sympathetic yeah. vomiter. Sympathetic that's, vomiter. My, that's my first one. Nice. Um, my next name? one, I only had two, but my next one was that Mr. Wegman is this, like, he's staying at the hotel. He's, like, kind of a Midwest, like, just, uh, he's very, I mean, it's the 90s, so he's not a boomer, but he looks very boomery. But he's, yeah. like, wearing his freaking, like, you know, Tommy Bahama shirt. Not really, because it's not Tommy Bahama, but it's that style. Yeah. He's, like, yeah, that's he's style. dressed like a cornball. He's, like, probably wearing dad shoes like a referee. He's yeah, at this he fancy hotel. Is. He's got his wife there. She's mad because he's not planning anything. He's tipping the bartender 50 cents after he eats lunch. Like he has no idea what's very, going on. It's a very good sandwich. Thank you very yeah, much. <laughs> he's not ready for New York City at all. Right. Um, and so Michael J. Fox just, just, the bartender guilts him into helping him out. He's like, come on, he's a nice guy. He's like, you helped me and the missus stay at a divorce court. And so Michael J. Fox just like rolls up to him and just goes, I got the tickets you wanted. Miss Saigon's very hard, so I couldn't get you all the way to the front, but you're in the fourth row. He's like, and then you go to this place for dinner. You, you got the reservations. Everything's ready to go, just like you asked me for. Like, out of nowhere, just gives it to him. Right. Just, just sets right. him up, and his wife's like, oh, Sparky, it's so nice. I'm going to go get a dress. <laughs> got to get my <laughs> yeah. hair done. Yeah, go um, see Kenneth. He does Ivana. Right. Yeah. And then and then afterwards, Mr. Wigman's like, ah, oh, you really saved my bacon. She hasn't called me Sparky in years. And he like tries to hand him like a crumpled $1 bill. And Michael J. Fox goes, <laughs> just, he just like pushes it back to him. He's like, don't confuse yourself with all these little denominations. Like, just wait until I'm the best friend you've ever had. And then give a tip that's so painful. It's like passing a kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Freaking. Um, yeah. I, I vividly remember that, too, before I even watched that movie. Like, I, I remember him not tipping well. Yeah. And, Dude, does he even ever tip? Like, remember uh, no. when they're dancing later, he's like, oh, he must be a big tipper. He's like, no, not really. Like, yeah. He's just doing it because he's a nice guy. No, and he never Michael does. Michael J. Fox. But that's the thing, man. This is like, you know, I'm not saying we should teach a film school class about this movie, but that's another really smart part of this movie. Is you just That guy ends up playing an important role later on, both with Gra- Gabrielle Anwar. He likes telling her. She's like, yeah, he'll like Doug will do whatever for anybody who can help him out, and he's like, that's not my impression of him at all. He, right. he we haven't done anything for him. He's just helped because he's nice, right? Like, but I guess you probably know him better than I do. Like, so he helps her see that, like, maybe, like, obviously Doug's doing whatever for her, you know, boyfriend, fian- boyfriend Christian, because he's trying to get him to finance his hotel. But he's also helping right. Mr. Wegman, who's going to tip him like fifty cents, right? Uh, so and she the sees these actually is like he's just helping people, and then. Yeah. Like, and a great he's going to, and Mr. Wegman's going to be the one who actually finances the hotel because Milton, the old, like, Jackass. <laughs> the old guy that Michael J. Fox wouldn't let them fire, accidentally mailed his prospectus to the, yeah, the bellhop, mailed it to the Wegmans instead of to the people it was supposed to go to. Right. Um, instead of the, the box that you already talked about. Yeah. The, instead of the, the box, box that the of, watch was supposed to go in. Like, right. this is like, this is a smart, like, well built movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why? It's six and a half. Get out of here with that shit. <laughs> well, dude, it's Siskel and Ebert gave it two out of four. Yeah, what do they know? We're, we're so much smarter than them. Yeah, well, I mean, the 93 <laughs> moviegoers didn't go see it. It made yeah, a third no, of its that's, budget. That's what they're basing it on. They're going in going, well, nobody saw this, but I guess we can review it. I do. Uh, I, I, we got to figure out. We just need to get big enough that we can get these questions answered. I just want to be able to call someone who was around then. And just go like, hey, it's JT from Movie Life Crisis. Please explain to me why 
for love or money didn't do better in 1993 because I was a kid and I have to know. I just yeah. want to be that's the level I want to get to. We can keep right. like not making any money and doing this <laughs> in our free time. I just want to get those questions answered. Yeah, I dude, I totally agree. And do, maybe somebody listening knows how we can get that question answered. Please let us know. The problem is, Let's, I feel sure we could get that question answered, but we don't even know enough to know who to ask. Right. Like, we're so ignorant, we don't even know where to go ask that question. <laughs> yes. We're just asking each other, and both of us are just shrugging yeah, on this video just, chat. We're, just, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're looking up money laundering in the dictionary. Just get a couple of nerds. <laughs> yes, this idea is horrible. <laughs> this idea is horrible. Uh, so, all right, so my second one is uh, Mr. Uh, Gene Salvatore who is uh, the, da- <laughs> the dad from Clueless, um, is at the door uh, of his uh, penthouse that, or suite that he's staying in. Wearing his very shaggy uh, sweater made out of chest he's, hair. <laughs> good God, he's so hairy. So hairy, it was so gross. Um, so yeah, he answers he, the door. <laughs> <laughs> he answers the door and it's uh, Michael J. Fox. And he's like, yeah, yeah, thanks for taking care of that, Dougie. No problem. Hey, you think we can get some of them things? He's like, uh, tings? Some of them, some of them tings on the pillow. Uh, what? I want to talk to you about them tings on the pillow. He's like, hair? He's the dumb tings. He's like, initials. I, he's like, Michael J. Fox is frantically trying to figure out what he's talking about. And he's like, them tings at night on the pillow. And then you could see it hit his face. Oh, mints, pillow mints. Yes, I will get you pillow mints. He's like, uh, how many would you like? He's like, how many do we want? And the girl in the back's like, a lot. And then a lot it shall be. And he, d- he gets a $100 bill handshake. Uh, them tings. Uh, it was cracking me up because <laughs> uh, he, that's... they were going back and forth and he just kept the hair. I don't, what? I remembered that part as it was happening. I was like, them things. It was like, oh, he wants the men's Michael J. Fox can't figure it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was telling people at work today about, it. I was like, them things. And I was trying to tell this <laughs> story and they're like, the chocolates. I was like, St- just let me finish. It's pillow mints. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that was my, that was my second one. Do you not have a third one? That's classic. I didn't have a third one. All right. So my third one. Um, is uh, Milton Milton mm-hmm. Glickman? Um, when he, he the dude. bellboy dude, he uh, hit bellhop every line he had was amazing. I could have written down <laughs> every piece of dialogue he delivered. Well, I think I did because, um, <laughs> the part that I had, I wanted to talk about how he take, only makes one trip. <laughs> Milton Milton Glickman has never taken two trips in his life, and he goes through the, all the things, the, the whole list 168 pieces. One trip, like he goes through the whole thing. Um, that's not the part that I wanted to do. He comes up to him about mid movie, and he's having the same problem. He's got a freaking guitar on his back, and it keeps falling and hitting the ground <laughs> when he bends over to pick up a piece of paper. And he's taking forever to do this uh, thing where he presses a script B from the Bradbury, which is the name of the hotel. Into the ashtray, into the, the sand and the, the ashtray. Sand and the ashtray. Like the, if you go to really nice hotels, they do like the imprint of the freaking yeah. the logo. And he was like, uh, he's like, can you hurry it up? He's like, I did this at Mister Bradbury's funeral. When I did this to his ashes, people wept. Dude, I don't know why that hit me so <laughs> right. I was dying laughing. Dude, that he's guy. Mister Bradbury is very particular about the ashtrays, and Michael J. Fox is like, he's been dead since 1967. These people have a three o'clock flight. Can we just hurry it along? <laughs> when I did this to his ashtrays, people <laughs> wept. Ah, he freaking killed it. Uh, by the way, that do you know that guy's real name? How do you say that? I I can see it clearly in front of me, but there's no chance. It's uh, it's it's Finkel, all in Yiddish. F- Finkel, no yeah, idea. Finkel is his last name, but his first name is F Y V U S H. Yeah, Five-ish? on his Wikipedia page, it says his name is Philip Fivush, F Y V U S H Finkel. Yeah. Uh, which I'm not going to. Yeah. I guess I just did attempt to pronounce. Let's just call him Philip Finkel. Yes, uh, Mr. Finkel. Lace dude, is out, Dan. Lace is out. Dude, <laughs> genius. He was brilliant. And he I, was really, and dude, him vacuuming in the bar and Michael J. Fox is trying to talk to <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> and he just, he, he puts the phone down on hold and he says, just go. Go, go, and let some vacuum. You gotta vacuum the bar at three o'clock. It's three o'clock on the dot, dude. I, he was great. Yeah, uh, but the whole thing when he, I did this to his ashes, people wept. Uh, <laughs> Michael J. Fox. Just, I'm sure that's not all they did, <laughs> dude. That's a throwaway line. That's great. Yeah, that's Michael J. Fox. Yeah, um, he's a, I had he's a little man. extra thing on there. I didn't. Yeah. I never used the word forlorn. Yeah, uh, until this movie. <laughs> 
But when he tells when uh, he tells Michael J. Fox to make him sound forlorn, yeah, and then he just keeps banging that home. He's like, "Forlorn is really the word I think that really encapsulates right. what he means." I dude, since then I've been using that word, and I learned it from this movie. <laughs> Make me sound forlorn. All right. <laughs> Good deal. Uh, let's do scary. characters. My first character is uh, Gabrielle Anwar. No, I'm just it's Michael J. Fox. It's Michael J. Fox. He's the best, man. Dude. I, he's just he's just an incredible actor. He's one of my favorites, and I I think he's he's doing amazing stuff. He's raised almost $800 million for Parkinson's research. Yeah. And ultimately, that's probably more important than making a bunch of really great movies, but I do – I am forlorn that we didn't get four more decades of Michael J. Fox movies. <laughs> I think that would be the word to describe it. That, that's just the perfect word is forlorn. <laughs> um, dude, uh, Michael J. Fox is my first also. I want to find somebody who explains why I like him better than the way I can because I just can't put it to words. Yeah. I tried to think of the – like for reals. Like there's a lot of movies where he's just kind of snarky but he's vulnerable but also cool and like – I don't know, dude. It's just really good. And he plays this kind of part in a lot of those movies, and I love it. Yeah, I mean, he started on Family Ties, and he was supposed to – like, that show was supposed to be about the parents. Like, it's it was the, – the concept was, like, the parents are really hippies, and the kids are really square. So he's supposed to pay, play this, like, waspy, like, Republican kid with, like, his Alex right. B. Keaton with his freaking ties. Yeah. And, like, by the fourth episode, everybody fi- involved with the show figured out that, like, this guy is so compelling – we're going to change the concept of the show to feature him more because yeah, people can't look away from him. Yeah. So I just think that he's just like that type of force as an actor that you just, he comes on screen, you go like, I got to watch this guy. He's going to do something interesting. I, I'm yeah. very, I got to, I got to figure out what's, what's going on here. Every time uh, we talk about family ties or I talk about family ties, I have to tell the story about when you were hang you and Will went to go see Javier at the Isla Capri Casino or wherever it was. <laughs> yeah. Really far away from yeah, Lafayette. And uh you guys couldn't think of the Family Ties theme song and you called and woke me up. Yeah. And it was like freaking twelve thirty midnight, like middle of the night. Yeah. And I wake up and you're like, what's the theme song to uh Family Ties? I'm sitting here with Javier and I was like, What what will we do, baby? And was, you were like, Yes, that's it. And I was like, oh, that's a freaking great story. I like telling that story. Um, plus, it's got Denise Williams, you know, Johnny Mathis, and I like hearing it for the boy. Yeah. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get Denise Williams. I'm trying to get that on Wolf Wolf's playlist next. I just I just sing him songs until he starts asking for that song, and then that song goes on the playlist. That's how I got Mariah Carey Dream Lover. Dude, that, ah, nice. that kid went all through Amsterdam today. just belting out Dream Lover in public parks. <laughs> do, 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 in his like little toddler voice. And then like Lionel Richie all night long, but like uh, let's hear it for the boy. I think it's the next one I really want to get on there. I'm working Dude, on that. Let me We're tell you. Close. So, so I don't know if you remember uh, Big and singing. Let's hear it for the boy. Um, and that part that she always does where she's like, let's hear it. <laughs> all right. So that is Cece's favorite part since I pointed that out, and she sings it almost like Biggin now. It's ridiculous. It's fan- it's so fantastic. That's great. You had to really put a little something on it. That's. <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. really dig down. Yeah, uh, I don't Michael- know how to explain Michael J. Fox, but he's amazing. And I think as soon as he got on TV, everyone realized he's amazing. And they've been like trying to get him on TV ever since. I watched yeah. the 16 minute interview of him on YouTube. Like he doesn't want to be there. He's talking to some like old lady in Dallas for like public Dallas public TV or whatever. Right. And he's like his energy level is terrible. Yeah. Because he's, he's pitched. He's trying to promote this movie in Dallas, Texas. And he doesn't right. want to be there. Yeah. And still I was like, he's a, he's I was like just staring game. at him. I was just like, <laughs> what a really good story. He wasn't even trying to make it interesting. Like he wanted to be done. I could tell that he wanted to be done. And I was yeah. still like, it was compelling. Yeah. I, I so need yeah, some dude, of that. He's just, like, he's just that guy, man. I don't, I, I want, don't know. I want, I want some of that so I can keep being a teacher for longer so I can keep their attention. Dude, if you if you had some of that Michael J. Fox, you, we'd already you'd already be retired from teaching, and this podcast would be a huge enterprise. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need I need some of it. I need something. We, we definitely need it, but we we don't need got a piece it. of it. I'm gonna grow um, my hair out. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything you want to add about Michael J. Fox? Uh, no, I just really like I, the first thing I wrote down was I. Do like you want to talk w- about what the J stands for? Yeah, what does the J stand for? It doesn't stand for anything. Yeah, it stands for nothing. You know why? There, because there was another Michael Fox in the Screen Actors Guild, and you can't have right. two people with the same name. Yeah, and his middle name was like I don't know, it started with an A, and he was like, yeah, Michael A. Fox. He's like, that's dumb. I don't like that. Michael a Fox, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, he's, yeah. But he's like, oh, I like there's a character actor that he liked that was Michael J. Something. He's like, oh, Michael J. But the J stands for – he's like, I tell people that J stands for genius. <laughs> it's freaking Michael J. Fox, man. It's funny. Telling Jerry Horn jokes. Oh, God. That's awesome. <laughs> the J stands for genius. I freaking love it. I'm, I can't wait to use that. <laughs> Uh, I like how in the very beginning we were made to think he was the wealthy guy sitting in the back of the uh, yeah. the limo. Uh, I really like that. that yeah, that's a good, a good misdirect. That's a who's good your setup. Who's your next character? Uh, my next uh, character is Philip Finkel, Milton Glickman. Man, he's good. When I did this to his ashes, people wept. Uh, <laughs> uh, I freak, Dude, he's so good. He played it perfect. Uh, I don't remember him from anything else other than that. I didn't recognize anything else that he was in that I remembered him being in. Uh, dude, I, I just really liked him as the bellhop. I thought it was funny. He's freaking walking slow. The guy wants to fire him, but they can't, uh, man, it's really great. Uh, he's yeah, just, he, a- uh, he's around forever. He was, uh, he won an Emmy, uh, for uh, Picket Fences, which is a drama in the 90s, right. which I did not watch. He was on Boston yeah. Public. Um, he he originated the Fiddler on the Roof uh, on Broadway in the 60s. Like he just he just worked for – I mean he, he died in 2016 at the age of like 93. But That's yeah, a pretty dude, good run. That was a hell of a run. But yeah, yeah I, I don't remember him from anything else really, uh, even though I definitely saw other stuff he was in. Yeah, he was, I, everything he I, did in this was fantastic. Dude, every time he was on screen, I liked it. It was good. Who's your second? My second was Gabrielle Anwar. Yeah. Um, I always really liked her. I, I always thought she was super cute when I was younger and obviously now still. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> what about, but she didn't, I what like about she, her no, now? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. She, yeah, she still looks great. Um, always and forever. Uh, she would never have talked to me, so it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but yes. But I thought she was a really good female lead. She just never really got. I was kind of, I because in the nineties, you there was no if someone if you didn't see somebody in a movie for a while, you had no idea what had happened to them in yeah. Louisiana. You're just like, but I'm not one girl. She was in a couple of movies that I liked, and then like <laughs> ten years later, she's in Burn Notice. And you're like, oh hey, there she is again. Hey, uh, there's that chick. Now we can figure out why. But at the point, I couldn't. Do you know she was uh, married and had a kid with uh, Craig Sheffer? Yeah, I was gonna say she used to be married to Craig Sheffer. That's Joe Kane crazy. from the program, and also uh, from the fishing movie with uh, Brad Pitt and your favorite Robert Redford. But yeah, Robert Redford. Yeah, she she does Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken in 1991. She's in Son of a Woman in 92. Neither of which we did in the podcast. Somehow we just right. did, neither of those made it. But those are right. those are pretty re- memorable roles. Both of those, absolutely. Uh, but then she, for to me, like kind of disappeared until Burn Notice, like in the early 2000s. Burn Notice. Yeah, that was late 2000s, wasn't I? Burn Notice, um, where she played Fiona, that's literally like I didn't even remember her being. Yeah, Burn Notice 2007. 2007. I, I, I knew it immediately when I started watching Burn Notice. I was like, hey, that's the girl from those movies I liked in the 90s. See, I didn't, I didn't put those two together. I'm looking at her uh, filmography. It's not like she, I mean, she did a bunch of like direct to video stuff in the late 90s. I yeah. mean, probably what happened is she got married and she had a kid and she wanted to spend some time raising a kid and like that's she a good was able call. to. And then she started working again and really it was like, you know, TV stuff, but yeah. Going back through her thing, I saw that she was in the movie, if looks could kill. And yep. we really missed the boat, not doing that in 91 because, uh, I used to love that movie. We it's missed a bunch in 91 cause we didn't start until August. So we right. missed like, we would have done 15 more movies then, but I know. just don't, that's probably one of those movies that you're also can't, um, you can't stream anywhere <laughs> though. So it's probably, Dude, I'm, didn't do it. I cannot believe that there are movies that you can't purchase digitally in 1993 because we're i mean this is all stuff that from released. 93 yeah 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 this dude uh, I, I i don't know i just what's your what's your third character my third character is uh michael tucker plays harry wegman yeah uh the 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 dork from the midwest that you were talking about uh, i really liked him like he played that part perfect and i liked how he was the person that kind of saved it all you know what i'm saying like he fixed all of the problems that were arising in the movie uh, indirectly. Yeah. Uh, and I really like it. And I like how uh, you could tell he was so out of his element when he was in New York, like you were talking about. But then at the end of the movie, when he gets that proposal and he's at the head of the table in that board meeting and he's throwing freaking directions around, you could tell like that's what he was actually supposed to do. Yeah, and he's like, I got the proposal. He's like, we don't usually deal in loans this small. He's like, but I love it. And it's like, who do I write the check out to? That's freaking amazing. 
Yeah, so I, I put him down. I like yeah. Mr. Wegman. Yeah, he's great, man. He's my third character as well. He's um, Michael Tucker, the actor. He's done a bunch of stuff. He was in L.A. Law for like yeah. you know nine years, and um, <laughs> not like a, a character actor, but like one of those guys that just comes into stuff. And like he's in D two. Um, yeah, like I not a lot that. of stuff that I recognize really, but the few things that I recognize him from. But yeah, he's yeah. great in this movie. This is like I was thinking about this when I was watching it. I was like, this is the classic. This would be the Bill Hader role. You know, he's like the yeah. guy that's like kind of important to the story, but isn't in that much of it. But when he is there, he's like doing good stuff. Yeah, he's he can he can carry it if he needs to, but he doesn't have to much. Of the right, time. he might say some stuff that's important enough that he'll end up in the trailer for the movie. Right, um, but or yeah, something he's, funny. He's enough. my yeah. third as well. Yeah, um, good, good, cool. good three. I like. Let's it. do uh, writer director. I didn't have anything about the writer, but I did have the director, Barry Sonnenfeld, who I already talked about. I knew him from Men in Black. He did all the Men in Black Men, movies. That's what I was going to say. Men in Black and Wild Wild West were the ones that I knew. Men in Black and Wild Wild West. That's I, like I recognized his name. With It said like produced by Brian Grazer, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, starring Michael J. Fox. That's when the credits hit. Those three names appeared, and I was like, how did this movie not do more business? Those are right. three really big names. Barry Sonnenfeld this time is not a big name, but the other two are. But I immediately um, recognize him from Men in Black and Wild Wild West. Well, Wild Wild West and Men in Black both made a lot of money. But like yeah. another movie that he made that I love that Will and I quote all the time, Big Trouble, like that was another movie that did super poor. Like it made zero, like it negative. It was something like $40 million and it only made eight or something crazy like that. What I yeah. Like that's crazy to me that that's a thing. Um because even that, that's like, do you know what movie I'm talking about? Big Trouble? Yeah. With Tim Allen and uh, whatever her name is. Renee Russo. And yeah. Dude, it's got a ton of people in it. And like, uh, it's super funny. I don't understand how these movies aren't making money. Like, I don't, again, I don't know who to ask either, but like, he's made a ton of movies that have a, a very specific look and a very specific style. And the, I always like them. That's why it's weird that nobody else does. Apparently. Well, he did some stuff for the Cone Brothers. Um, he did Raising Arizona, Miller's Crossing. Um, Raising Arizona was a big movie for the Cone Brothers, but again, right, like, right. it made $30 million right. on a $5 million right. budget. Right, right. And then he was the DP for some Rob Reiner stuff, like Harry Met Sally and Misery. Like, those are big movies. Yeah. Uh, he worked uh, he, on Throw Mama big. from the Train. But, I think he yeah, was on he, Big, too. He was yeah. a cinematographer or something. Uh, he got to start uh, working in Bornos. Of course. Uh, filming him, I'm guessing, not acting. But, <laughs> I, would, um, I would assume filming him, um, which seems like the worst yeah. part of that to be in. But dude, Barry Sonnenfeld's a really good director. He's done a bunch of stuff that I like, like yeah. Get Shorty, All the Men in Black stuff, Wild Wild West. I, dude, I'm with it. I really uh, enjoy his stuff. I, the guy who wrote um, the movie Rosenthal, he mm-hmm. did Jewel of the Nile. That's my jam. Um, some of the, like one of the new Planet of the Apes. Like he wrote some of the stuff yeah. that I've seen. Superman, but just Four. not. Yes. Superman 4. What is this? <laughs> I can't believe we have two office space jokes in here. <laughs> uh, but he worked with the other guy, uh, Lawrence Connor. Uh, they worked together on a lot of those movies. Dude, I like a lot of those movies. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, like, I, how do these movies not make money? I, do people just not like movies, maybe? <laughs> Dude, I, we're going to we're gonna have to figure out how to answer that. And, and probably if people knew the answer to that, they would be making tons of money financing right. movies. I think right. I'm I, I, like, I'm sure the studio that spent $30 million on this money didn't think it wasn't going to make money. They clearly expected right. it to, because you wouldn't spend $30, $30 million to get back 11. Right. So probably or spend 40 million to get back eight or whatever. Right. The other that's one, what I'm saying. The other one like, after this was they obviously want them to make money and they're yeah. trying to make money. Everyone's intention is for them to make money. So when they don't, I'm sure people are going like, I don't know what happened there. Yeah. The uh, but sometimes it, right. sometimes what happens is like the movie isn't good, but this movie is good. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe they needed a more uh, a bigger star female lead or a bigger another big star in there. Maybe Michael J. Fox was like sick from Parkinson's and didn't do the press tour that he wanted to do. Maybe right. it released in the wrong month. Like I don't. I have no idea. Maybe they didn't have a marketing budget, and so they were hoping it would be word of mouth. Like I don't maybe, know. Maybe people didn't know what concierge meant. People still don't know that because I know <laughs> you and I don't know that. I'm going to um, – A concierge is an employee kids. of a multi-tenant building such as a hotel or apartment building who receives guests. The concept has been applied more generally to other hospitality settings and to personal concierges who manage the errands of private clients. Yeah. All right. Worst? you got any worst? I do have a couple of things. Uh, people's teeth were yellow as hell in this movie. <laughs> what the hell? I didn't remember people's teeth being this yellow. 
this is an Oval Redenbacher commercial. <laughs> Where do we get all these ugly people? Where do they get all these ugly people? <laughs> yeah, that was the worst. I, had. I like there wasn't like you said it was quick. Yeah, uh, like the, it was very well paced. All that stuff. I, I mean, I think there's probably some like minor quibbling I could do with the big storyline where like the guy's trying to rip him off. I, I didn't. I, I don't care that much about that. I didn't think right. that that took up a lot more of this movie than it really needed to for me. The whole like he's like calls in a favor and takes a helicopter ride, then he jumps out of the helicopter onto the beach. Like that whole thing, I could yeah, I could tie. Dude, that house by the way, I was like, holy shit, is that Bernie's house from Weekend to Bernie's? It looks just like it. Uh, which was also in the Hamptons, but it turns out that house that they filmed was in South Carolina. Um, so no, that's a different nice. house. Yeah. Uh, really no major complaints. The funny thing is this movie is like, it's about 90 minutes, 96 minutes, but you know, minus credits, 90 minutes. Right. I watched it on my computer and right. I, even still I sat and watched it in one go. Like I didn't, right. a lot of times I'm watching stuff on TV and it's like uh, 35 minutes. Like I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get a snack. I'm going right. to do some stuff, come back to it. But yeah, like yeah. this one, like I went straight through it, even sitting at my computer desk, watching it on exactly. my stupid. Uh, Super fast paced. I like it. I like yeah. it. Really There's, good pacing. Uh, dude, uh, I have some, well, we haven't gotten to old tech. I'll wait till we get there. Yeah, let's do it because I don't have any at worst. Okay. Uh, two old techs that I had was uh, the Concord. He missed. Yeah. Th- they talked about the Concord. That's I awesome. Heard that. I think there's people that I teach now that don't don't even know what that is. Dude, there's no, there's people that you teach with that don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, but those people are dumb. <laughs> the other thing was is old tech alert. There was at the 12 minute and 50 second mark. The phone is ringing, and the sound of that phone ringing, it's like a digital phone ring, is the sound from Pizza Hut way Don't back in the 90s. Doggy. And it's, it's like, like, but it's a ringing sound, and I've never been able to find that as a sound to download, because I would love to use that uh, for something in my class. I, I, just, I don't know how to look that up. Like, how do I find that? Wait, can you sound? not grab it from the movie? From the no, audio? there's too much talk. I tried. There's too yeah. much talking and stuff over it. I couldn't like filter it out. I was like, enhance, and it wasn't working. Like, I yeah. just couldn't get it to, to sound right. If you could figure out what that sound is called or how, what I even look up to yeah. make to find that ring, dude, I've gone through so many rings. I'll go back and listen to it. You got it's at the 12 minute 50 second mark. I don't know what to do. I All right. I really want that sound. Five questions. Is it okay for kids? Uh, yeah, it seemed like to yeah, me. Six, I, my six year old watched it and it's fine. Nice. It was great. Did she, did she enjoy it or did she just she, watch it? Yeah, she laughed at some of the stuff. She, she was getting it. She has a yeah. great sense of humor though. So she does. Regular, uh, regular six year olds, maybe not. Regular six year olds for sure not. Would yeah. this movie get made if it were pitched now? I don't, I mean, I don't Is know. Is there a Michael J. Making? Fox type person anymore? That's the problem, man. I don't know how to recast if it's Michael J. Fox. I don't have anyone to put in that slot. And I also don't, no one makes romantic comedies anymore, really. Uh, right. We're going to see Bottoms this weekend, which I'm pretty excited yeah. about. It's like apparently only uh, LGBT like filmmakers make romantic comedies, which is fine. I'm there. I'm going. Uh, but like uh, all the rom- all the rom coms we can get, I'm count me in. But they yeah they don't make a lot of them anymore. So yeah, I don't know if you can get this movie made without Michael J. Fox, given that it's basically a rom com. Right. I don't see why not. It's not expensive and it'd yeah. be fun. But I just don't know. They don't do it. Yeah, probably because you won't make anything anymore. That's why they stopped making them. They, they didn't make it, They didn't make money with Michael J. Fox in this movie, so I'm sure they're not. Excited to do another one. Right, 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 right. Movie or TV show? It seems like it's a got movie to me. A movie, right? Did you do any recasting? I gave you my Bill Hader role, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't. No, I really couldn't do it, dude. I was trying to come up like, with like like Tom Holland is about the right age, but like I just can't. As charming as Tom Holland is, he's not Michael J. Fox. No, he's not. And I, dude, I couldn't find anybody that would redo it. Like all the people, I was just like, you know how I try to do it. I go by age. And then I say, like, uh, maybe let's find somebody that's not white, since yeah. there was all white people in this movie. Um, and then even there, I was just having trouble. There's no uh, chance to find a real, like, is there an African-American Michael J. Fox? Yeah. Who, who's who's freaking charming like that and can say stuff to people's face and still get away with it? I'm sure there are a bunch of people. I just don't know them. Yeah, um, I don't know them either. That's the, that's the problem, is I'm looking and even at the, pictures. Even the people that are, like, really quick, like Kevin Hart, really quick, also very short, Michael J. Fox sized, but, like, yeah. not charming, just really funny and really quick. Right, right. And, like, he's not doing a rom-com. Yeah, plus he's a little old for this part now. Well, aren't we all? But, like, I'm <laughs> saying, like, there are people out there I just don't know. I do want Steven Root to play Milton Glickman, because that dude can play anything. Yeah, he's he's great. Yeah, uh, um, but no, I, I couldn't I couldn't recast it. I was having trouble with that. 
All right. Can you still watch and enjoy this movie in 2023? Yeah, yeah man. Okay. Say eight. It's good. Say eight. Everyone should watch. I mean, everyone should not watch it because it's impossible to watch, watch this. It. We don't like this one at all. Don't try and watch it. Yeah. Um, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, friends. We don't know how to fix that. You can you can sail the high seas of the internet and get it. <laughs> Har. I'm right. sure somebody's got it out there. Yeah. It's around, potentially. Uh, we can't, Maybe. We cannot legally comment one way or the other, but it's probably. Or you go on YouTube, type in For Love or Money 1993, and there's an entire copy of it on YouTube. And zoom in really close. Zoom in enhance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> enhance. Thanks for listening. Next movie on the regular feed. Oh, I have man, not I seen can't. this movie in so long. Dude, I've seen it once, and I'm pretty sure I watched it with you. Sylvester Stallone, Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. This is such a JT movie in my head. I'm 99% sure I watched this shit with you. It really is, man. Because there, there was this just brief moment in the <laughs> early 90s where like, remember that movie where uh, Wesley Snipes was like a skydiver with like Natasha Henstridge? Yeah. And there's a couple like, there are a couple like. Terminal uh, Velocity. No, Terminal that's Velocity. Drop Zone. Drop Zone. Drop Zone. There were, yeah. Like there was a, just a moment where these were the movies that everyone was making. This is one of those like, really stupid action movies that's. What's the uh, one with. Uh, made a ton of money. This thing made like a hundred and something million dollars. Of course it did. It's Stallone. Who's yeah. the guy who played uh, Chris, uh, Chris O'Donnell? Didn't he do a, a climbing movie? Yeah. And around the same time too? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what so that's that what I'm saying. We're going to catch that window. That's not right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I can't wait for Cliffhanger. I'm super excited. And <laughs> Patreon has a uh, freaking, uh, the next one is uh, Harry, and Sally. Harry, Harry and Sally. I love that shit. Let's do it. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, please remember to uh, join us on Patreon. If you want to hear some of the old movies or support the arts and uh, support we'll see the arts. you in two weeks for Stallone. That's the first Stallone movie we've done. I can't wait. That's because we missed Oscar. We missed Oscar. And we'll do another one a few weeks after Cliffhanger, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's Demolition, Demolition Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I absolutely freaking cannot wait for. That, that's such – I'm going to watch that one early so I can really make sure I have so much notes that you have to edit all the stuff out. Dude, yeah, that could easily be a two-hour episode. <laughs> Just go deep on Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm going to go deep on Taco Bell tonight. <laughs> so don't worry about that. That's coming. Uh, all right. Vaya con Dios. Vaya con Dios. Thanks for listening to Movie Life Crisis. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And remember, don't drive angry.